Welcome to Make Something with me, David Picciuto, and today we are going to make this mirror. I'm going to show you how we glue up the wood into this funky shape, as well as cutting the glass. And today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. Check. There are going to be no straight lines in today's project. We are going to make a mirror that is going to complement the hallway cabinet that we made a couple of weeks ago. Really, really happy with the way this came out. It looks great in our house. If you haven't seen that video, you might want to go check that out. This is some walnut that we got from my friends at KenCraft. I've already gone ahead and bought the mirror for this. This is 28 inches by 28 inches. Should be slightly bigger than what I need. We'll be cutting that to later. If you're curious, that cost me $54 for this mirror. I have no idea if that is a good deal or not, but I have my local glass company cut that up for me. And that is one eighth inch, and I'm really super afraid that it's going to break. So I'm going to set this aside for now. So for the shape of this, we are going to freehand draw the outside and freehand draw the inside. It's going to be a very organic shape. This is going to offset all the square, rectangular, parallel lines of the cabinet. So this is, it's meant to contrast that. I drew a 28 by 28 inch square on here, and I'm just going to freehand this shape. This is very organic. There are no straight lines. And just doing a couple of little practice rounds. For the inside, I'm going to draw the offset, but I'm going to purposely not keep the same distance. I want to keep this really crazy organic shape. So once again, I'm going to come in, I don't know, and then in the corner, we'll maybe we'll get a little thinner and then we'll get some, get real thick out here and then a little thinner here. So I keep playing with the inside shape here and I think I want a thick area here, a thick area here and a thick area here. And then it kind of gets thinner in between those areas. I keep changing my mind, but that's part of the design process here. So, I'm gonna take my Sharpie and just maybe kind of finalize that one more time. So now I'm going to cut this out and then that's going to help me see the final shape just a little bit better. I put some masking tape on the back just to thicken the template up so it wouldn't curl up on me so much. And uh, I had to fix a mistake here, but I think that's going to work. We got three thick parts and then three thin parts. So now we got to figure out how to take that walnut and make it this shape. So I've taken my walnut and I planed it down so everything is the same thickness. And then I jointed one side and then cut a parallel side on the table saw. So this should all glue up nice and easy. So now this is kind of like the hard part of the entire project, which won't be that hard. It's just going to be a lot of pieces is just kind of piecing it together so we can make this frame. Everything is going to be long grain to long grain. So it should be a nice, easy glue up without any reinforcements. A nice, long, straight piece right there. That will be this side right here. And then the next thing I need to do is figure out the next piece. So I can take this and I can cut that off right there. And that will go like so. And then we can cut that one off right there. And it'll go like that. And then we'll just keep doing this all the way around. I think I'm gonna stop right here with these four pieces and glue these up. Cause I think if I try to do this all at once, clamping is gonna get a little bit weird. So we're gonna do it in section. I made a mark where I want these to line up. That way I can't screw up the glue up. making sure everything is nice and flush. One more section glued up here that's going to get glued on to this. I gotta let this dry a little bit because these clamps are kind of getting in the way. So once this dries, 
Then I can clamp these two sections together. I've got one more piece to glue on here, but unfortunately it's not gonna work like that because these two lines are not parallel. So I'm gonna use the straight edge here and run this on the table saw to clean this up and then glue on this last piece. So now that last piece will fit on there perfect. I'm, I'm kind of figuring all of this out on the fly and I've decided before I glue this last piece on to cut this out over on the bandsaw. That way I can get the bandsaw on the inside and do that as well instead of using a jigsaw on the inside. It will make gluing up the last piece a little bit more difficult but one problem at a time. I think cutting this out now on the bandsaw is just going to make life easier. So I'm going to trace the template onto the piece. Then we can glue this final piece on here. Won't be able to get clamps on there because of all the curves, but this is long grain to long grain. So tape is going to work just fine. We'll stretch that over that joint. And then flip it over. <laughs> and do the same on this side. So the glue has dried on that final piece. I took this to the disc sander and sanded all along the outside. And then for the inside, I used the spindle sander until I got the final shape that I want. So I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. So now we have to route a rabbit on the inside that's going to hold the mirror. And in my router, I have a rabbiting bit. It's got a little bearing here that's going to ride along the edge. And then the, the bit is going to chew away the wood. I'm gonna do this in multiple passes because I don't wanna remove a whole bunch of material at one time. So, time to make a mess. Now I'm going to put a round over on the face. I'm going to use a bigger round over bit on the outside and a smaller round over bit on the inside just for decorative purposes. And I'm going to do this at the router table. I could do this with the handheld router, but the big flat surface here, just going to make it a lot easier and safer for me. We are getting close to the part that I'm not looking forward to, which is cutting the mirror to this funky shape. Um, I'm just worried that I'm gonna waste 50 some dollars by breaking the mirror, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. I mean, I've, I've cut glass before. I've cut curves. So right now I am just putting Odie's oil on here. You just wipe it on and then you wipe it off. It's super easy to apply. It looks amazing on walnut. Take a paper towel and I just wipe away all the excess. So before I cut this mirror into that funky shape, I'd like to tell you about today's sponsor and that is Squarespace. We are all makers and crafters and woodworkers and metalworkers and artists 
and we need a place to show off our stuff, we need a place to sell our stuff, Squarespace is the place to do that. The reason all of my sites are Squarespace sites is because Squarespace is super easy to work with. The great thing about their templates is you can just leave them as is if you want to and they are absolutely beautiful and they will work. Or if you're like me and you want to modify them and change out the color schemes and add graphics, you can do that as well. You can modify the templates as much as you want. So if you have a business card and you want to share your portfolio with someone, you send them right to your Squarespace site and they can see your Twitter feed and your Instagram feed and your photo gallery and all your work. And if you sell things, they can purchase stuff right from your site. Squarespace makes all of that super easy easy. My store is part of my Squarespace site. I sell digital plans as well as physical books and t-shirts and merch and all kinds of other stuff. I used to be a web developer. I was a web developer for 10 years. I know a thing or two about coding a website from scratch and luckily I never have to do that again. So visit squarespace.com and when you're ready to launch visit squarespace.com slash make something for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now we really need to start cutting up this mirror. I'm not looking forward to this because this is going to be scary. Thank you Squarespace. Let's start cutting. That looks like a cool shot on camera. All right, so I'm gonna take a Sharpie. I have my glass cutter here. I've got some glass cutting oil. Um, instead of filling this up, what I like to do is just pour some on a surface and then I can dip my cutter into that. I'm not skilled enough to do some of these sharper turns. So I'm going to kind of veer off the path a little bit and then I also will probably make some relief cuts. This is an experiment. Everything is an experiment. So let's see what happens here. So I'm gonna stick a pen underneath there and then just snap that off. Look at that. Break that off. Break that off. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that is looking good. This is a framer's point driver. Think of it like a staple gun, but for picture framing. And so I just set this on here and it drives in these little points. There we go. That is it. I gotta clean up the mirror a little bit. And, uh, oh yeah, we gotta add some hanging hardware, don't we? Take that and twist it. And then I have this an inch from the top. And then I put on a couple little bumpers on the bottom so it sits off the wall just a little bit. So we got that hung up. It looks great above this cabinet. Again, I made this cabinet a few weeks ago. I've got a video on this and I really love the contrasting uh, top that we put on this cabinet. So um, there's nothing in there now, but we keep dog stuff in there. The wood for this mirror came from my friends at KenCraft. You can visit them at KenCraftCompany.com. They are in Toledo, Ohio, but they do ship online. And I just, the only finish that I used on the mirror was two coats of that Odie's oil. And it looks fantastic. I love that there are no straight lines. There were no computers involved. It was just hand drawn and all kind of willy nilly. The inspiration came from a mirror that we were looking at online to purchase for this section. And I'm like, hey, I think I can make that. That is gonna wrap it up. We'll see you again next week with a brand new project. As always, be safe, have fun, stay passionate, and make something.